Today we will be talking about varicella, more commonly known as the chicken pox. Now, does anybody remember those chicken pox parties that our parents made us attend or even hosted with all of your friends and cousins? Seems like a silly idea once you actually learn a little bit about the disease. The varicella zoster virus is an airborne viral disease. This means that it can be transferred when an infected person sneezes or coughs and an uninfected individual inhales the air droplets. Now, it can also be passed if there is direct contact with the rash. The rash being the main symptom of varicella, it typically occurs on the chest, back, and face first. And it can come in three different stages. Step one, you start having these pink or red raised bumps, which are called papules. They continue to break out for several days. Step two is these bumps turn into fluid-filled blisters called vesicles. They typically form in about a day. And when they break, they leak and there's a fluid. Step three, these vesicles then crust and scab over, covering the blisters and then take several more days to actually fully heal. And these steps do not always come right one after the other. You can have all three stages at the same time. While this is the main symptom, others include fatigue, headache, and loss of appetite. There are a few people who are at a higher risk for contracting varicella, and these include infants, adolescents, pregnant women, and people who have a weakened immune system. This group of people is also at a higher risk of developing complications which may arise from varicella. Some of the complications that these people can suffer include an infection of the lung, um, could be pneumonia, sepsis, bleeding problems, and infections in the brain. Another negative aspect of varicella is that it can also lead to shingles, which is a disease that affects people typically as a senior. Now, if a person were to be exposed to someone with shingles, they would be able to contract uh, varicella as well. The primary focus of what we have done about varicella is vaccination. Varicella vaccines are both safe and effective and offer protection for not only yourself, but your family and community. Varicella was first identified as a communicable disease in 1875 by Rudolf Steiner. Steiner demonstrated his finding by inoculating volunteers with fluids from blisters of patients with acute varicella. The varicella vaccine was first developed in Japan in the 1970s as a live attenuated vaccine. Despite this, the vaccine was not commercially available until 1984 as a frozen formulation. The first refrigerated varicella vaccine did not come to market until 1994. It was around this time that countries around the world began to implement vaccination programs to control the spread of varicella. The varicella vaccine can be administered in a monovalent vaccine or as a component of the MMRV vaccine. In Canada, single-dose varicella immunization programs were implemented between 2000 and 2007, with Ontario being implemented in 2004. Since this implementation, both cases of varicella and hospitalization rates have decreased. Similar results were seen in countries such as Taiwan, Uruguay, Australia, Germany, and Italy. In the present day, we are continuing with vaccination programs in order to prevent cases of varicella. It is now recommended that programs involve two doses of the varicella vaccine in order to achieve maximum efficacy. The efficacy of one dose of varicella vaccine is 94.4%, while two doses is 98.3%. The recommended age for the first dose is between 12 and 15 months old, with the second dose occurring at 18 months or later. The World Health Organization recommends that varicella should be introduced to routine vaccinations within countries that varicella presents itself as a public health burden. Despite this, varicella vaccination recommendations only exist in 33 countries worldwide. Another way that we are addressing varicella in the present day is through mandatory vaccination in children attending schools and daycares. An example of this in school-aged children is the Immunization of School Pupils Act in which all students born in or after 2010 must have two doses of the varicella vaccine in order to attend school. For children that do not attend school but attend a licensed child care center, mandatory vaccination is enforced through the Child Care and Early Years Act. Both of these acts state that children attending must be immunized against varicella unless they have a valid religious or medical exemption. Varicella continues to be an endemic infection, with epidemics seen every two to three years. There tends to be significant variation year to year, but incidence ranges from 13 to 16 cases per 1,000 people per year. The varicella vaccine is highly effective. 
In the United States, varicella vaccination programs have resulted in a decline in incidence of over 95% in vaccinated populations. In addition to lower rates in those vaccinated, there was also herd immunity effects. The WHO lists the varicella vaccine as one of the essential medicines for children, yet still only a few countries routinely vaccinate for varicella, including Canada, Australia, Japan, the United States, as well as some European and Middle Eastern countries. The WHO aims for an 80% vaccination rate. Varicella is usually considered a self-limiting disease, meaning most people just allow the illness to run its course. And because of this, there is evidence to show that vaccination rates may not be as high as experts aim for, as some consider it not worth to be investing in. In addition to the cost, research suggests that there may be a risk to older populations if vaccination rates in children reach the WHO's suggested rate of 80%. There is worry that the burden of varicella will shift to older populations who are at a significantly higher risk for complications that can result in hospitalization. In addition to vaccination rates not being as high as WHO recommendations, eradication of varicella proves to be challenging due to reactivation of the virus after either vaccination or natural infection. Varicella is most commonly found in temperate climates of the Northern Hemisphere. This disease is also most common during late winter to early spring. Most cases in these temperate climates occur in children before the age of 10. However, this disease does not only occur in temperate climates, its geographical distribution is worldwide. This being said, the epidemiology of varicella is less understood in tropical areas. The economic impact of varicella has been decreasing, with the total estimated direct medical expenditures for ambulatory visits and hospitalizations decreasing by 74%, from $84.9 million to $22.1 million. Many resources were used to treat varicella, and all of these resources require some sort of funds. These resources include hospitalizations, emergency department visits, and doctor's office visits. A main reason why there has been a decrease in the economic impact is the varicella vaccine becoming publicly funded instead of privately funded. When the vaccine became publicly funded, the percentage of hospitalizations dropped 9%, emergency department visits dropped 23%, and doctor's office visits dropped 29%. Since there was less of a need for these resources to treat varicella, the economic impact was lessened. Another major economic impact of varicella comes from the parents who stay home to take care of their children who have the disease. When the parents stay home, they are unable to work and therefore are unable to make any money. This economic impact also ties to the social impact of varicella. Varicella is a very contagious disease, so when someone contracts it, they must be careful to not pass it on to others. This means they will be unable to socialize and interact with others while they have the disease and must remain out of close contact.